you know, when things are out of your control, what little changes can you make in your life to, to sort of get through, whether it's not the next week, maybe the next day, the next hour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this installment of Community Conversations. It's hard to believe that it's been more than a year since we began these screencasts. This month, we will be addressing the extremely important topic of student well-being. So I'd like to jump straight in and ask everyone, please, to introduce themselves. My name is Monica Chang. I'm one of the secondary school counselors, as well as the peer mentoring program coordinator at CIS. My name is Tim Conroy Stocker, and I am Head of Counseling and Learning Enhancement at CIS Secondary. My name is Jamie, and uh, this is my third year at CIS. I'm one of the primary counselors here. Um, my name is Anne Mock, and I am a counselor at, um, in the secondary school. My name is Nick Panza. This is my third year at CIS. I'm one of the two primary counselors. So my first question is the following. How has the COVID-19 pandemic challenged our students? Everyone's always trying to stay one step ahead. And, and I think when you are a young person, you're trying to gain a sense of control in your world. So it makes you feel anxious, not knowing, you know, how is my day going to look? Am I online? Am I not online? Um, so I think the students have been really good about understanding what that is. And I think the thing that, the, you know, that they miss the most and find it hardest is that you know, I was really excited to come to school because I could see my friends. The social nature of this, um, it's really highlighted the fact that people need to be together in the same room, not just over Zoom. Um, there's, there's a lot to be said for interacting. I think for primary school students, um, it's most challenging for them to stay focused in Zoom classes. They are spending most of the day sitting in front of a computer, sitting by themselves at home, and uh, having all sorts of distractions make it hard for them. And what happens there is that some existing tension that already exists, we do know, whether it's generation gap, cultural gap, what have you, existing tension is further surfaced and exacerbated by the, what I call, forced presence with each other. And I think some families have really taken advantage of making use of this family time, this forced presence now become kind of regular family time for them. I, I think the big issue at the moment is hope. And hope involves having a realistic goal, knowing how to achieve it, and believing in yourself that you can get there. And that's super hard for kids to have at the moment because it's life is so uncertain. And, and of course, hope is also a way we can help them as well at the same time because we can help them work out what goals they can have. And what can we educators and parents do to support them? The kids look to the adults in their life to see how to handle this uncertainty. Um, and if the adults don't have a good sense of well-being, aren't engaging in healthy activities, uh, it's very unlikely that the students or the children will be able to do that as well. It's about um, continuing the one-on-one -on -one support that we give to parents and students. When we say one-on-one, -on -one, it's really, you know, I think counselors reaching out, advisors reaching out to kids, uh, teachers reaching out to kids one-on-one. -on, -one. on the one hand, it, it, you know, it, it does make things challenging not being able to see the students all the time every day. But on the other hand, it also helps us with accountability with families um, to make sure that we're keeping up those uh, lines of communication and to make sure that, you know, parents do know what's going on with their, with their kids and, and also, you know, making sure that they stay safe and well as well. It's a sort of a constant reminder to both parents, staff and to, to students to just share how they're feeling, share what's going on for them, um, to, for parents to remind children that these are extraordinary times, that this is not normal. Um, but I think it's also important to schedule downtime to allow them to get in touch with themselves. To what extent do you think that our students can and should help one another? I would say that actually peers are talking to peers and they are influencing each other, whether or not we have structured it. We don't need to structure it often. The opportunity for them to further connect, uh, you know, on campus and as well as even on the social media, um, I think it is important. It does need guidance, especially for the younger kids. Try to help them. But if, if you feel like you can't help them, then come and talk to a counsellor. Many students talk about the caring CIS community, and I think that's where we're quite strong. I think I think the, the kids are, the kids do do that, but it doesn't hurt to keep on with that message to them about looking out for other people. 
something that I often hear is, I can't tell my friend, they're going through stuff too. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't tell my parents, they're so stressed out with their business or, you know, my brother or, or whoever, you know, so it ends up being that there are 50 other things of importance on this list and then it's me. So I don't want to be that burden. So it's actually the, the, the student themselves thinks that, you know, I'm not a person of worth. I don't deserve the time. I need to get over it. And so the message that we really try to give them is your friends care about you. Your parents care about you. We care about you. You are a person of worth and we want to hear what you have to say. What do you expect life will be like for our students after the pandemic? I think students will come out of it stronger, but we may have to highlight the strengths for them. So we may, they might just think, wow, I survived that. It's over. Thank, thank goodness for that. But I think it's important for us to have conversations with them and say, to ask them, what skills did you use to get through that? Because that was hard. In, in one line for me is they're learning to adapt to changes. And, you know, a fancy name for it is transitions. Some people could have had a very easy time and throughout the pandemic and others clearly haven't. Um, and there's a lot of lessons to be to be had from this, but we will definitely need to take the time to listen to each other and learn something about this. I think like for the majority of our students, I do think the experience um, like during this time will actually make them stronger. Um, but we need to give them opportunities to reflect. If we don't do that with them, um, then they will just sort of move on and not really remember. It would be very easy to kind of go um, not back into a life that you used to know, but it'd be very easy to readjust because um, that's what we're meant to do. Um, so, I, so I think that that part's really important to just give space and opportunity for kids to be able to reflect. My last question is simple. It's what do you personally look forward most in a post-COVID world? I, I want to go home so badly. I want to see my parents. Um, yeah, just family, number one. Not even travel. It's just let's get the families back together. Yeah, ditto, ditto the family thing. I'm... Um... I'm empty nested through this COVID for the first time. I'm not used to that. So I am dying to go and see them and find them. They are dying to visit me. When I say they, I mean my kids. The thing that I really, really miss though is uh, contact, human connection, like actually just seeing somebody and not having that fear to shake their hand or give them a hug or pat somebody on the back. I've met new people since last year but I don't even know how they look <laughs> so um, yeah that's one of the things and also hoping, hoping that like I can feel a bit more certain and in control of my own life yeah. to walk outside um, to travel to work to go shopping to meet friends without any sense of fear or doubt um, to just to just do those those normal things that I think uh, we all took for granted Professor Lee Waters, our partner for transforming CIS into a visible well-being school, recently wrote that gratitude is, quote, the positive emotional response to benevolence, perhaps the quintessential positive trait, an amplifier of goodness in oneself, the world, and others, unquote. On behalf of everyone in our CIS community, dear student support team, please allow me to express our deepest gratitude to you. Take care.